It has been a great trainer aircraft for more than half a century in Europe. The Swedish Air Force, Flickwapnet, and the Austrian Air Force very much relied on this specific aircraft. Almost all Swedish and Austrian fighter jet pilots in service learned how to fly fighter jets in it. It's the Swedish Saab 105. It all started in the late 1950s, under the name SK-60, the Svenska Aeroplan Aktie Bollatet, today known as Saab, developed a twin-engine jet trainer for the Swedish Air Force to replace the aging fleet. At the time, the aircraft designing process was completely different to today. Based on a business jet, Saab developed a modern twin-engine fighter jet with a detail. One thing that the Saab 105 is known for is the cockpit. Different to most trainers, the pilots sit next to each other instead of behind each other. This led to great performance in the Air Force's flying schools. And because the 105 is based on a business jet, the two ejection seats can be replaced by four standard seats as you know them from any other airliner, just to do VIP flights or similar. Originally, the Saab 105 was powered by two Turbomaker Obis Quay engines that were produced under license in Sweden and were called RM9. These engines produced 7500 newtons or 750 kilograms of thrust. In the mid-19th, Swedish Saab 105s received brand new engines of the type Williams FJ441 c Austrian 105s were powered by a lot more powerful engines the General Electric J85GE17B that produced 12,300 newtons of thrust each. This gave them a unique flying performance, as lots of videos on airshows prove. With this power setup, the Austrian Saab 105s could fly up to 13,700 meters or 45,000 feet high. The maximum range was 2,770 kilometers if they used two extra outboard tanks and the maximum speed was 970 km an hour. Just remember that these technical data only apply for the Saab 105 OE, the version of the Austrian Air Force. Due to the different and more powerful engines, technical data may be a little different with the slower Swedish version SK-60A and SK-60B. But all in all, they are in a similar category. The Saab 105 is a quite compact aircraft. Its wingspan of 9.5 meters is just a meter shorter than its length of 10.5 meters. This results in a total wing area of 16.3 square meters. The tail is designed in a T-tail configuration to move the horizontal stabilizer away from the engine exhausts and has a total height of 2.8 meters. To describe all versions of the Saab 105 that were existing in detail, it would take way too long for this single video. So we will focus on the most important ones. The first serial produced version was called Saab SK-60, later declared as SK-60A. After modifying the SK-60A's engines in the 1990s, these aircraft were called SK-60B. The reconnaissance variant was called SK-60C. It featured cameras and sensors in its nose and it was only in use with the Swedish Air Force. The export version of the 105 was called Saab 105 XT. The Austrian was renamed 105 OE because it featured several heavy modifications just as the engines. In 1966 the Swedish Air Force received its first out of 150 aircraft. Almost 130 of them would still fly today 56 years later in 2022. Austria ordered 40 aircraft, which started being delivered in 1970. Exactly 50 years later, in 2022, the 22 airworthy ones did their last flight. It took the Austrian Air Force two years to disassemble the aircraft and prepare them for delivery to museums and schools. Now it's mid-2022, the Saab 105 that's intended for the higher technical college in Eisenstadt, to be fair, it's an aviation technology college in Austria, has just arrived in its new home. For the upcoming years, hundreds of future pilots, aircraft designers and aircraft technicians will train maintenance on this specific aircraft. I've also done a report on the delivery of the Sub 105 to Eisenstadt's Technical College. Have a look at it and follow this channel to get a notification when I upload a brand new video.